Starvation increased after the British left. Disease increased after the British left because localized government that was really centralized socialist government could not manage the country. And then a miracle occurred. Somewhere along the way, uh, I think it was in the 1990s when reforms began, and India abandoned the socialism that they had created in as a copy, a carbon copy, but worse of, uh, of, uh, of, of the British. And once they got rid of socialism, what is socialism? Let's make it simple. Let's say you own a house in America or even an apartment and you want to build something. How many different permits do you have to apply for? That's socialism. Every time you apply for a license or a permit, you're facing a socialist bureaucrat. I live in a various areas around the country. One of them is Marin County. It's perhaps the most impossible place on earth to do anything because the socialist bureaucracy is crippling. To put up a fence, 10 morons have to sign off on it. 10 morons, permits, licenses, idiot morons. So people don't build as much as they would. It cripples growth in every way imaginable. Everyone knows this except the socialists in Marin County, New York City, and, and Washington. So in India, they abandoned the licensing and the permit process in 1991. They got rid of their socialism, and they adopted economic reforms that converted the once lumbering elephant into the Asian tiger that we know it to be. Why? Now, they were warned by this communist socialist then, just as Obama and the phonies warn you now, that India would suffer a lost decade of growth if they got rid of this kind of constrictive socialism. The Indian people were warned that opening up the nation would allow multinationals to crush Indian companies. And fiscal stringency, meaning no more printing of money, no more government programs, would strangle social spending and safety nets, hitting poor people and regions. Does it sound familiar to you? Does it sound just like Hillary Clinton's uh, policies? Well, there you go. But guess what happened? Indian businesses not only held their own, they became multinationals themselves. Booming revenue from fast growth financed a boom that has never been seen in India, India's history. Why? Because the people were free to do as they felt was best to build a business and make a profit. In other words, the free market worked. The absolute opposite of what this fraud doing an Alaskan dance is telling us. Everything this liar-in-chief tells you is, is backwards from the real-world experience. The man is stuck in the doxies of the 1960. 1960s. This is a madman running America. A madman who doesn't even know what world history has taught us. Nothing. So there's your little mini lesson on what socialism is. When you hear the word socialist, you don't know what it means. You, you don't know. Your images come to your mind. I'm a pictographic performer. So when I say socialist to you, think of the bureaucrat in your town or city who you have to go to to put a deck on your house or to put a road sign in front of your house, or to add a room to your house, that's socialism. I'm Michael Savage, anti-socialist. I'll be right back. Of unprotected thought, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. This is as good of a signpost of what we're dealing with uh, when it comes to climate change as just about anything. Uh, this is one of the most studied glaciers because it's so easily accessible. Uh, but what it indicates because of the changing patterns of winters uh, with less snow, longer, hotter summers, uh, is how rapidly uh, the glacier is receding. So there he is again, uh, now pushing the lie about global warming again to see what he can r rake out of the economy before he leaves for his friends who make billions of dollars in industries surrounding the anti-fossil fuel mania. There is more money right now in solar than there is in heroin. There is more money now in this than there was in drugs. And don't think that criminals have not gone into the solar business. I can't be specific because I still have a number of years left on the earth that I respect. Uh, God has given me to help disseminate the truth, but I've never seen anything like this. This man's mania for lies and to pull the wool over people's eyes is so shocking 
The climate change lie is one of the greatest lies in history. So he goes there and he sees a glacier that's melting. And he says that uh, here's a post marked 1926, another post reading 1951, and shows that the glacier is retreating. And what this community organizer didn't learn in the gutters of Chicago as he was organizing the rabble to get into his first uh, office is that ice, uh, ice has been retreating for thousands of years. Uh, he didn't learn that in the gutters of Chicago from Saul Alinsky. He didn't learn a lot of things. And I guess he didn't even learn the basics that they teach a kid in the third grade. You see, Mr. Obama, when ice warms above 32 degrees Fahrenheit for any length of time, it actually melts. That un you understand how that works? You see how that works? And Mr. Obama, do you understand that we understand that this is a big lie? Do we, we know that 15,000 years ago there was a glacier that covered all of North America. And it's been retreating ever since. Mr. Obama, please study some basic science and you will see a phase in climate called the Little Ice Age. Did you know about the Little Ice Age and what happened in Europe and North America? Of course, your ancestors were in here, nor were mine. The Native Americans were here. And they have historical records of the Little Ice Age when they all almost froze to death. And what happened after the Little Ice Age is the ice started to melt. It began around 1440 AD. There was no industrialization at that time. And so there was a Little Ice Age, you see, that's why. And the fact of the matter is, well, now we're through another warming phase. It's another warming phase, and uh, that's what we're living through. Which is not to argue for pollution. I mean, I've been fighting pollution and trying to save rainforests for 30, 40 years. So don't put me in the category of being a polluter. I just like the truth. You see, also, Mr. Obama, if you study any history of the Vikings, you will learn this, and it's not in Alinsky's Rules for Radicals. The Vikings settled Greenland when it was green. That's why it was called Greenland. And they did farming and raised livestock. And Mr. Obama, again, you didn't find this in the tractates of Karl Marx, but when the Vikings settled Greenland, there was a period of between the year 600 and 800 A.D. And then what happened, Mr. Obama, is the mini ice age occurred from about the mid-1300s to the mid-1800s. And Greenland became covered with ice. And do you know what usually follows an ice age, Mr. Obama? I'm sure you know this. It's called warming, a warming age. And the reason you are able to screw the world with this big lie along with the bouncer from Rome who's coming here to do more on this is because people are stupid. They're not learning basic science. They're idiots. They're uneducated dolts, which is how a man like you could become president to begin with and get away with what you've been getting away with. The people are stupid. They know nothing about ice. They know nothing about warming. They know nothing about when, when ice melts. They know nothing about history. They know nothing about geography, nothing about geology, and they don't care. All they care is that you go up there in your billion-dollar airplane with your entourage spewing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and take a boat ride spewing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and lecture the world. You phony you. And this is the world you live in because of a community organizer like this. This is the savage nation. What sad times we live in. That a con man like this, a man as thin as this intellectually, can march around the globe doing so much damage, including the damage of promoting a fraud like this in, in open daylight. And of course, Obama is a maniac in the sense that he has no limitation on what damage he wants to do to this nation to bring it to its knees. So he goes up there, changes the name of a mountain to an indigenous name in order to get the people up there who don't vote to, first of all, buy into his lie about fossil fuels which supplies a good number of jobs and income to the indigenous people. So he changes the name of the mountain in order to sway them to his, his uh, false viewpoint. Nobody told this community organizer, apparently, about the Ice Ages when he was at Columbia. He was too busy reading Karl Marx and Saul Alinsky. There have been five Ice Ages that we know of dating back as far as 850 million years ago. The last one was in the Pliocene Quaternary era, which began about two and a half million years ago, Mr. Obama, and it ended 10,000 years ago. 
And Mr. Obama, I know you didn't read this in Alinsky's Rules for Radicals, but in these five ice ages, there was an in-between period. And in between all of these ice ages, Mr. Obama, the earth was warming for thousands of years before it began to cool again. And you know, Mr. Obama, what happens during the warming periods? The ice sheets melt and sea levels rise. Mr. Obama, I know you didn't study this at Columbia, but uh, I think your daughters are probably learning that in the seventh grade. Also, Mr. Obama, something that you didn't learn at Columbia is that when glaciers recede, what you find are tree stumps. What does that mean, Mr. Obama? Now, kind of put your thinking cap on, not your rhetoric cap. Put on your thinking cap, Mr. Obama. When glaciers recede, you see tree stumps. What does that mean? It means that not long ago, the glacier was in a similar stage as now, without global warming caused by any, any anthropogenic source. Shall I go on, Mr. Liar-in-Chief, trying to con the world into this? I'll go on. Mr. Obama, you didn't learn this while you were at uh, Columbia University, but in the 1500s, the Vatican and 97% of the scientists in the 1500s, the Vatican, oh, wait till he comes here, the bouncer from uh, Rome. Wait until Rome sends their, sends their bouncer around the world. The Vatican and 97% of the scientists in the 1500s said the Earth is the center of the universe, Mr. Obama. In the 1960s, while you were, I guess, a young man or young young student, we were told, beware the coming ice age. It was in the front of Time magazine. In the 1970s, the, the moron, Jimmy Carter, said the world will run out of fossil fuel in the next decade. That's Jimmy Carter. In the 1980s, we were warned that we we're all going to die of skin cancer because of the hole in the ozone layer. In the 1990s, we were told that at the turn of the millennium, all the computers in the world will fail and send the world into chaos. In the 2000s, Al Gorleone came along and made a fortune saying, beware global warming. In 2010s, we were warned climate change will create monster storms and weather anomalies that are going to destroy the world. Mr. Obama looked back because in the 1880s, there was a very wise man named P.T. Barnum who wrote, there was a sucker born every minute. Also, Mr. Obama, you may not have read this in your years as a community organizer using a staple gun on bulletin boards around Chicago, but 15,000 years ago, Mr. Obama, there was a glacier that covered all of North America. Uh, are we to blame the Industrial Revolution for its demise? Or do you know, Mr. Obama, that 10,000 years ago, the land that you live in was buried in over 300 feet of ice? And it's all gone just because of those stupid mastodons passing gas. If only Al Gore and O'Dummy were around, then this might have been prevented. They could have stopped this from happening. They could have, I guess, interned the mastodons. And they could have told them to stop eating carbon-based plants. And then him and uh, Al Gore and O'Dummy would scratch their heads and they could have saved the world. And we would still have 300 feet of ice over North America. Now, I want to go on to the next one. Today, John Kerry gave a long intellectual speech on why we should give Iran the bomb while saying we, we're doing this to make sure they don't get the bomb. And it was interesting. I didn't listen to the whole thing. It became boring. And I watched him and I got agitated because I saw him lying. His eyes become shaded. His eyes become shadowy. I remember him throwing his Vietnam era medals over the wall and joining the anti-American protesters. I remember what an evil man uh, John Kerry really is, what a slimy creature he really is. But let's put aside my distaste for this pack of left-wing fanatics that are ruining America and the world. And let's look at the words themselves. Let you liberals who listen to me, because you know secretly you agree with most of what I say, even though you say I don't agree with you. I'm going to give you an example of how John Kerry gave away why, why, he and Obama, mainly Obama, has appeased and capitulated to the mullahs in Tehran in clip number two on the Savage Nation. My friends, it just doesn't make sense to conclude that we should vote no now because of what might happen in 15 years, thereby guaranteeing that what might happen in 15 years will actually begin to happen now. Because if this agreement is rejected, Every possible reason for worry in the future would have to be confronted now. Stop. Stop. Listen to what John Kerry just gave away. Somebody put a, a, a poison pill in his speech. His speechwriter actually gave away 
the big lie. He said, if the agreement is rejected,